This is installment 11 of 5 cool things for your RV and in this video we begin by talking about flatware. Now you wouldn't think you'd need to have any special kind of flatware for RVs however if you buy some of the stuff at discount stores they can start pitting and usually you'll find pitting around the back end around here and it'll be black. Well that's mold and you don't want that. When you shop for flatware for your RV make sure that it says either 304 stainless or 18 slash 10 both of which describe the same thing and that's food grade stainless and 18 slash 10 means 18 percent chromium 10 percent nickel which is a corrosion resistant food grade metal and so do yourself a favor and make sure it says one or the other now what we're looking at here is a set that we bought two boats ago so we've had this on two boats and we had it in two RVs We've had it about 20 years and it wasn't cheap. They were about $75 to buy. And you know, they were kind of wore out a little bit. The little anchors on some of them, you know, are wore off. And of course, you know, the anchors are because we originally bought them for a boat. But these have never stained. These have never had any black pits. These have always come out clean. Now, these are made in China. But just beware, if you're going to find 304 or 18.8 stainless made in China for $20, it's a possibility that, you know, that metal isn't really what it's supposed to be. Oftentimes, the RV-style refrigerators come under criticism for not really cooling the refrigerator section sufficiently. And if we look at our thermometer, we can see that we're close to 50 degrees. However, we have another thermometer here that is right on the coils. So in reality the refrigerator does get cold enough however when you have it full of stuff it just does not have the natural air circulation so you have hot spots and that's where these fans come in and you can buy a couple different types. This is one made by Camco and Valterra makes one and actually they really do work. We're just going to put this fan next to the coldest spot in the refrigerator and then we're going to close it and we've had the fan in there for a couple hours so let's open it up and see what it looks like and we look at our thermometer and we're about 33 34 degrees so actually that's pretty good and it's all because we just circulated the air we start out with a technor apex zero g hose for your rv now this is a fairly small package it's one of those flexible hoses you know that you see on tv however i really have hesitated from buying one for the RV because I never thought that they were good enough for RV use. However this one is blue so it's kind of hard to see but it is 40% lighter weight, um, drinking water safe, designed for RV and marine use, manufactured with FDA materials and lead safe and it's made by Technor which make a lot of different types of RV hoses so I thought you know this one probably will work. So we're going to take this out of the package and try it, see how it works, and I may just throw all my old hoses away. And you can kind of see here that this is a mess, and this is usually how the water hose ends up getting stored until we get home and, you know, pull it out and redo it all. And hopefully this uh, new uh, water hose will prevent this. And what would barely fit 50 feet of hose, I've got a 50 foot and a 25 foot hose in. And this is going to really store a lot easier than the other hose. We will do actually a test on the hose to see how well it holds up. And uh, if I find it doesn't hold up, I'll do another video later. And after a few days of use, we have no leaks or anything bad to say about this water hose. Now, it is not like the ones you see on TV where it's going to shrink half length. It will collapse flat, but it really won't become much shorter. But even so, when it collapses flat, it's much easier to handle. And the fittings actually are pretty nice. Actually, I like those. And it's a blue rather than white, which is acceptable still for drinking water because a lot of the marinas have blue water hoses. We will start out by replacing the bolt here with what you can call a pad eye or a lifting ring, and we're going to install it in place of the bolt. Apparently, when they did the original bolt, they stripped the threads, probably because they used a you know pneumatic drill. So then they did another one. So I had to open that up just a little bit more so a quarter inch bolt would fit through here. Put the breakaway back on, put a little drop of blue Loctite on, and just thread it on. You can get a wrench in there. 
and tighten it down. There we go. So now I have a place to put the end of my uh, breakaway cable in and it's nice and secure and won't fall off. And we have here a Valley Forge Solar Flagpole Marco Light. And now you may have seen a previous video where I had a light on top of my 22 foot uh, pole. However, the little small three foot ones that, you know, are suction cupped on and things, you know, they, they need to be lighted too if you're going to fly the American flag at night by standards of etiquette. And this one does just that. And we have a solar panel and a small micro LED light. And we have a one and a quarter inch ring and a one inch adapter, so this will fit the smaller flagpoles. Uh, and that's on both of these. So we're going to install this and see how it works. And you can see the solar panel pointing up and the light pointing out on the flag kit. As we zoom out. And uh, we'll come take a look at it tonight and see how it looks. And there you have it. 